Next up in question five, we are given this kind of parametric equations x equal to that y equal to that. And we have to prove that dy dx is coming out to be this. So for this, what we are actually doing is in order to compute dy dx, we are using a chain. rule. We are going to get what's our dy dt. We're going to multiply it with dt dx. Because from here, we can find what is dx dt. From here, we can find what is dy dt. And I can use them to find this. Or else, in other words, you can also do this. dy dt divided by dx dt. It's one and the same thing. So this dt dt gets out and you're left with dy dx. So let's find what are dy dt and what is uh, dx dt. And then substitute it in this formula. So to get dy dt, my dy dt, we, I can also represent that as y dot. But anyway, let me just write it completely. dy dt comes out to be uh, 2t plus 1. That's it. And now when I come to dx dt, when I come to dx dt, I'm going to implement the product rule. What is the product rule? So product rule is simply saying that if you are having, let's say, u into v, then the differentiation of this differentiation of this will be what it will be u or else in other words if i have to just try differentiation. oops ignore that twice but yeah in other words if i have to differentiate u dot v it will be the first differentiation keep v as it is then the v terms differentiation keep the first term as it is that will be your product of differentiation so over here let's say that t is your u and e power of 2t is v so what is the differentiation of one? I mean t, the answer is going to be one. And I'll keep e power of two t as it is. Then plus, what is the differentiation of e power of two t? It's two e power of two t, two e power of two t. And then I'll keep t as it is. So I'll just fit that t over here. So yeah, that's the differentiation that we are able to fetch from this. And if you can see that e power of two t is common. So e power of two t, and then we are having this 2t from this term and 1 from this term. So now basically if you expand this, it will be equal to that. The reason that I am doing this is because I can also see that dy dt is forming is 2t plus 1. And then when we are knowing that this is the kind of ratio that we need to make, then these terms are going to be getting cancelled out and we'll be getting something e power of negative 2t. So let's do that. So now that this implies uh, my dy dx is what? dy dt that is 2t plus 1 over dx dt which is e power of 2t and 2t plus 1 i hope you are seeing where this is going so this is going to cancel out we are having 1 divided by e power of 2t which is same as writing e power of negative 2t this becomes answer to the first part of question 5. So now for part B, what we are having is we have to show that the normal to the curve where t is equals to negative one passes through this particular point. So we need to find out first of all, what's the equation of the normal to the curve when t is equals to this. For that, we'll be requiring some things from part A. So let me scroll up and show you what are the things that we'll be requiring. So yeah, we need the coordinates at which t is equals to negative one. So I just mention it over here somewhere on the side. Uh, let's say that I'm just drawing an extra uh, box over here so that we are having a proper space, even if we are scrolling it later on. So the when at t is equals to negative one, what is my x equal to? x equals to negative one e to the power of two times negative one. So x becomes minus e power of negative two, or in other words, minus one over e square. What is my y equal to? Negative one square is one. 1, negative 1 is 0, so y will be equal to 3. So at t is equal to negative, these are the coordinates of x and y. And what is the value of the gradient? So gradient of normal. We know that the gradient at of the tangent is e power of negative 2. So the negative reciprocal of this will be what? It will be negative reciprocal of that negative e. And if you do the reciprocal, this becomes positive 2t. But now because we know that the t is negative 1, this will be equal to negative e power of negative 2, which is same as this, which is 
writing one minus one by e square. So now we are having the point at t is equals to negative one on the curve. We also know what is the gradient of the normal at that t equal to negative one. All we need to do is to get the equation of this normal of the curve and then satisfy the coordinates that is asked to us. So now uh, I can just uh, shift this whole thing, including that white stuff. If I can grab that, let me check. Yes, I'll just grab that down and scroll a bit up. Yeah, that's good enough. And let me just say that equation of normal at t equal to negative one is as follows. So y is equals to m. What is m? Negative one by e squared, negative one by e squared, x plus c. I'm substituting my y is equal to three. So minus one by e squared multiplied by x is also minus one by e squared plus c. If I simplify this, this is three is equals to positive one over e to the power of four plus c. So now what's my y intercept? My y intercept becomes three minus one over e power of four. Now clearly we know that this is nothing but representing your the point of y intercept. This is y intercept of normal equation of normal at t equals to negative one. So we can clearly state from this that when the value of x is zero, y will be equal to y intercept. Hence, when x is equal to zero, y is equal to y intercept and that is equal to three minus one e power of four. And that's what we are proving that this point zero comma three minus one over e power of four lies on that equation of normal. So whenever we get this kind of equations to prove a point lies on a particular thing, you just substitute your x and y. And if your left side equals to right side, you are done.